a lot of people do not hire teachers and grow a music school because they're scared that no one will do it as great as they will do it, right? And no one will care as much. No one will take care of the equipment as much. No one will teach the students as well. All those things. And it just, you know, terrifies people and they just don't start and they stay just owning a job, being a teacher on their own. Uh, some of those things are actually true. Um, you will probably always be one of the best teachers, one of the people that treats the company the best and takes care of all the equipment the best, retains the most students, all that sort of stuff. But there are many things that you can do to grow a great music school and get these things under control. And so I just did a massive uh, workshop for uh, our members talking about retention and some strategies. I want to pull one of the sections from that workshop and show you talking about retention and getting your staff fired up about uh, retaining students, measuring it, and giving them tactics and tools so that they can retain students. Because uh, retaining students is kind of like having a bucket, right? And if your bucket is full of holes, the water is just leaking out. So you can do all the marketing you want, but if they're just falling out the other end, uh, you're just losing money and going to go backwards at some point. So what you have to do is plug all those holes and retain the water, retain the students. So let's cut to that clip now. hope you enjoy it. Um, if you want more great stuff like this on a higher level, um, grab a link to a free trial for Build a Music School down below and just published, right? So here's a basic example of a document. You've got your teacher 1 to 10, the different names. This is basically all you have to do is so you or your team count hey, 1st of January, how many students did they have at the start of the month? You put in those numbers. And then you count the number of cancelled students across that month. So at the end, last day of the month, okay, teacher one had seven cancelled. Teacher two had three cancelled. You might say, well, why, why don't we count the number of students that they have? Um, because you might have got new students across the month, right? So if you lost five and gained five, well, it would give you a retention rate of 100%, but that's not true because you lost five. So you work from the cancelled. And so basically it's whatever this is, here's the formula. Um, so whatever you started with minus what you lost divided by what you started with. And so you get a retention rate for each person. And so that's as simple as the doc is. And then what we would do was we'd just go, all right, guys. Now, we did it quarterly, not um, not monthly. If I was running my school again, I'd, I'd probably do it monthly. You, you pull this into another document, and then you just have to lock this row so that won't change. And then you just click here and go, I want you to sort sheet from Z to A, so from the highest number to the lowest. And then you can say to your team, all right, guys, time to announce our retention winners of the month. So congratulations to Teacher 10, who got 100% retention. Hey, you get 100 bucks. And and the first thing people do is they, they look to see where their name is. So they might go, Johnny. Oh, crap, I'm last. Okay. Um, they look to see their name and look to see who's last and then acknowledge the winner. You never bring up who's last, but the social pressure uh, does its thing. You can decide to give one big prize to the top person each month or each quarter, or you could have first, second, third, whatever you want to do. Uh, and you can even have a team goal. Hey, if the whole team gets above 95%, we, we all get X amount or something like this. So the main point there is to like rally your team around retention. So it's not just something that's on your shoulders, but they know actively, okay, I'm being measured. I want to win this prize. That's not the only thing that's going to motivate me. I also need to be set up and supported for success. So tell me, Johnny, what can I actually do in my job to make sure that I have good retention? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go chat to your admin team and you're going to go, hey, give me all the cancellation reasons for the last the last year. And you go through and you sit with the team. You're like, all right, this kid canceled because the teacher was always late and seemed disorganized. Okay, what would the opposite of that be? And you discuss it. Okay, so showing up on time. What does it look like to show up on time? Like, um, well, it's not racing in with our bag. I'll be there with you in a minute. It's coming in all organized, the room set up. Hey, so good to see you, not feeling rushed. And so you just go through all the cancellation reasons, talk as a team about, hey, what would be the opposite? And you start doing those things. And also each month when you announce the winner and give away your, your voucher or your, your prize, make that teacher the hero. Go, hey, Kelly, you won this this week uh, or this month. 
tell us what's something that you think that you've done that's led to you winning. Like, don't keep the secret to yourself. Like, have you been doing anything interesting in your lessons, something you've noticed? Tell us so we can all learn. So it makes them the hero. It gets the whole team thinking about it. 